Next up, I'm going to invite Franak up on stage, uh, and he's going to kick off with, the first, with his first speech, which is going to be about digital influence as a tool for participatory democracy and social change. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Um, I am so happy you all came today. And uh, thank you for your effort, for your time, and uh, for your readiness to solve all these world problems today. Uh, actually, I don't have the clicker. Do you have one? Can you give me? Uh, so today I'm going to speak about boring things uh, that we are going to solve during these two days, but I think the next presentation will be much funnier than mine. Uh, so um, first of all, I'd like to start with the idea that we never lived in such a great time as now in sense of the freedom, in sense of sec security, in sense of democracy. F digital influence we are discussing today, it's about democracy, first of all. Uh, and unfortunately, we underestimate the power of the guys who are having their YouTube channels. Can, can we have the slides? Something wrong? Yes. Uh, we are underestimating the power of these guys who are creating YouTube channels, making Instagram posts, tweeting all the time, because basically we gave power to everyone. Digital influence is also about the embracing change. Many of my friends and colleagues, they're so um, sad about the ice cream from the Soviet Union. Sometimes they are telling, oh my God, this, the ice cream was so good, it, was, it, it, it costed only 11 kopeik, and uh, now all the ice cream is so bad. And they are ready you know, to, to give up their freedom, their uh, gadgets, their possibilities, their voting rights, just to get back to the Soviet past and to eat this ice cream. And this also about the media, about TV, about newspaper, about radio. People who remember this technology these tools from their childhood, from their young ages, they want to come back because they are usually nostalgic about their past. And what we people here must do, we must realize, we must admit that the world will never be as it was before and we have to embrace the change and empower ourselves with this change. Digital influence is also about the same opportunities. Before, we had so many filters. It was so difficult to get good education, to get to the university, to travel abroad. Uh, it was so difficult to get uh, uh, to, to become the uh, trendsetter, to create news, to become quoted by, um, by, by famous music stars, politicians. Now it's easy. You just need to participate. You just need to tweet. You ju just need to make posts. So everyone uh, has the same rights, the same opportunities, and it, it's up to us how we use these opportunities. Digital influence is also about campaigns with social impact, and this is the main topic of our, uh, of our forum. So we, we must realize and we have to think out of box. It's not only about uh, pets, uh, it's not only about fashion, it's also about uh, important topics like we have seen at the screen, about disinformation, about the access to uh, to, to um, media, it's about transparency, it's about uh, countering corruption. And what we have to solve today and tomorrow, we have to find uh, the way to motivate people who has digital influence, never was engaged in politics or social activism, but can be uh, involved now. So what you need to become digital um, uh, influ influential and uh, what is that what are main ingredients for the success first of all you have to you need a clear strategy and understanding what are you doing and for what uh, you have always answer the question for yourself so what if you are posting something if you're writing something if you're commenting or putting like so what what does it mean you spent your precious five seconds 15 seconds or one minute and what is the impact of your fifth, five or ten seconds? You always have to assess yourself and your efficiency and how, you, how your time is consumed. It's also about the trust. Digital influencers are much better than media, actually, because they understand that if they will lose trust once of their followers, they will lose their followers forever. Media and journalists working for bigger corporations and organizations, they underestimate the, the importance of the trust. Influence is also about the participation. It's always about the comment. I think all of you are following stars on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, we have many influencers in this room. They respond to each comment. 
I came from the journalist background from, from uh, Radio Free Europe, and actually I must say we, we neglect the importance of answering to each commentator under the post we are making because we create the content, we are happy we create it, and we don't care about the uh, life and about the future of this, of this uh, signal, of this message we sent. It's also about consistency. So uh, coming back to the strategy question, Digital Communication Network, our organization believes in the big shift flow from large and powerful to small and many. Before, 60 years ago, when Cold War started, um, BBC, Voice America, Radio Free Europe launched international broadcasters. We believed if we will launch huge organization, corporation with reporters all over the world, we will change the world for better. For now, it's not enough. We can be large and power, powerful, we can have many resources and many people working for us, but it's not enough. We can't reach people in remote areas, we can't reach people with special interests. So this is why we have to create a lot of small groups, small channels, small uh, sources of influence. It's not only about um, journalism, it's also about marketing, it's also about politics, it's, al it's also about military. All of these uh, sectors, they change the strategy. They realize that centralized approach doesn't work anymore. So there are three. It's a basic, it's a from the school book, you know, so I uh, didn't make this slide, it's, I just like copy pasted it. Uh, so instead of centralizing and decentralizing, we are believing in distributed. We don't need actually to define the message for influencer or for our partners or for our friends. We just need the common understanding, the vision, the common strategy of what we do. And we have to give them the freedom to decide how they want to spread this vision and how they want to support this mission. Influencers are about informal networks. I would uh, give my example from the military service. Uh, when I used to be in army, we had this, you know, the vertical system of uh, management. We have the generals, you know, colonels, officers, surgeons, and everything. But not, actually, not uh, them who decided about the habits, about behavior, about the attitudes within the military unit. But surgeons and people and officers who had the biggest respect. Sometimes they had the power, but sometimes they didn't. Sometimes privates, who were the most respected in the uh, collective, they had much bigger influence to other people. And now, informal networks created by digital influencers, they create another layer of the civil society. And sometimes, oh, this layer is much more powerful than the structured, organized um, uh, corporation, company, military unit. Participation is critical. When we talk about digital influence, we talk about participative democracy. And this is our dream, this is our goal. You know, to, to make our world better, freer. So when you, did you watch Chernobyl series? HBO, the latest one. You know how nuclear uh, reactor working now, right? Everyone knows. So in order, in order to make the system working, you need a lot of elements. And if you take out some of these elements from the system, it explodes. The same with democracy. In order to make the system functioning, and democracy working and being efficient, you need all the elements to be present. And the most important fuel for this reactor, reactor of democracy, are people. When people are not participating, the reactor is going to explode. And this is what we are seeing now. Lesser and lesser young people go to election. Lesser and lesser people care about their countries, about their states, about their organizations, about uh, other people actually. And this is the biggest problem, and this is also the uh, thing we can solve with digital influencers. Not always digital influencers are the smart people. And this creates the, the big problem. Because uh, when we talk about digital influence, we, we must admit that many influencers are mal-influencers ma mal and spreading disinformation and bad things. And dictators actually use it very well. They empower bad influencers and they, they um, manipulate the public opinion. So, but, but what we have to do, we have to understand, in order to get success and make our influence um, impactful, we have to be loud. We, we must make sure that our voice, our message, our tweet, our Instagram is 
well prepared and it's uh, well distributed. It is amplified and it is multiplied. And you have to be active, of course. When we talk about digital influence, we talk about uh, niche content. Uh, instead of created one, uh, as I mentioned, no Voice America Radio for Europe, um, we, we, we need many, many, many small messages that are reaching many, many small uh, target groups. Uh, and this works also with digital influencers, just, just look. When we see this, I can't show on the screen. So let's see, there is an influencer, and who, who is sending, maybe it could be an organization, it could be initiative, it could be project. He or she sends different messages to different groups who are multipliers. So let's call them advocates. And these advocates, they have their own audiences. And they spread their own, they, they are packed messages that we sent in the beginning to the enthusiasts. So the principle 1990, which came fr fr from, from marketing, it also worked for digital influence. So we create a lot of, a lot of messages that reach different people and different groups. Let me give an example from Belarus. Um, instead of creating and supporting and uh, spending a lot of money for promoting one big pages, we began creating a lot of Telegram channels, economics of Belarus, politics of Belarus, culture of Belarus, and later, each of these channels got their own multipliers and amplifiers. And now we have the developed network of distribution, and when we count, the smaller sub-channels, they are given 10 times more traffic than the, ma than the main branded page on Telegram. So the uh, news journalist, content creator create the message. The message is repacked. It reached some audience. Later, it, it comes to influencers aggregator, which repack it for other audiences. It's important to mention the context. It's not about the format content. Of course, form is important. Content is very important. But the context is much, much more important. You have to follow the trend. You have to understand what are people discussing right now. And you have to hype. If you create the message, if you build a discussion around a specific topic, you need a special moment because people discuss only one thing per moment. And consistency. You must remember that digital influence and building digital influence is about full-time job. You have to spend 24, seven, uh, 24 hours, seven days per week in order to support this influence. If you're like Snapchat, you know, they want you to post every day. Instagram stories, they put your content higher if you post every day. So the same with digital influence. You have to be consistent. You have to work every day. And you must remember that your followers are the biggest value and probably uh, the biggest uh, capital you have. And each campaign, each project must have call to action. It's very difficult to measure influence. I think we will be discussing today how to measure digital influence. And I'm sure nobody in this room has a clear answer because we can measure uh, it differently. But what is the easiest way is, uh, is to define KPI as the call to action. It could be uh, uh, it could be uh, the, the product sold number, it could be um, signatures under uh, social political petition, could be number of voters who came to elections, but we always must measure our influence by the result, by the number of people who were involved, and, uh, and this is how we can understand are we successful or not. Uh, thank you again for coming to this conference. Um, please participate and ask questions on Slido slash DCN. Uh, register for tomorrow uh, on conference with your small presentations. You will have up to seven minutes to talk about your projects and ideas. And um, have, have fun. Uh, thank you again.